So you decided that you're gonna be getting a brand new construction home. You've picked your floor plan, you have your lot and your elevation selected, and you've been drooling over the model house for months now. But you know that the model house is loaded with every possible upgrade available and it's not going to be cheap. The time has come for you to visit the design center and you've got to figure out the best way to use your money. I've built multiple homes and I've been through this process a ton of times. The design center is my favorite part, but it can also be a little bit stressful. In this video, I'm going to show you what I consider to be the best places to put your money and also what I think you could probably just pass on when it comes to upgrades. So let's start. Before we get into upgrades, I want to touch on a couple of suggestions for upfront negotiation. It's been my experience that most new construction communities do not negotiate on the sales price of the homes, but are more likely to negotiate on the incentive money or the money that could be used towards upgrades. I've also found that some builders are now limiting the amount of times that you can visit the design center to just one visit, and you're expected to make all of your selections within that four hour visit. And for me, that's a really big problem because you're gonna need time to see what your options are, understand the costs associated with each of those options, and then also figure out if that's a good price or if you're gonna be better off adding it after closing. So in addition to negotiating some additional incentive money, I would also recommend negotiating two to three visits at the design center upfront. And that's before you sign your contract because obviously Obviously, you're going to have a lot more power before you sign your contract than you will after signing. Once you've signed it, it kind of is what it is and you're working within those parameters. So now you know what the builder is willing to contribute towards upgrade. At this point, you need to come up with a budget because honestly, it can add up really, really quickly. The average person spends 10% of the home costs on upgrades at the design center. And that is a huge chunk of money. So after you figure out your budget and before your design center appointment, I also tell my clients to do two things. Number one is to create and send me a few Pinterest boards specifically for the kitchen and the bathrooms and even for the overall mood of the house, the style you want for the house. Then number two, I want you to write down your non-negotiables or your must-haves. For instance, some people know that they 100% want quartz countertops or a waterfall island or maybe they have to have have wood floors throughout the whole first floor. I think it's a good idea to know that up front and have a starting point. And then this way we can just kind of work backwards with the budget and see what else we can make happen within the rest of the money, within the rest of the budget. Now that we know what we're working with, it's time to start making some decisions. So let's go through it upgrade by upgrade and talk about whether or not it should make the cut. Number one, structural upgrades. If there are options for structural upgrades that you know that you want, you should definitely go ahead and do those upgrades through the builder. An example would be like adding an extra garage or even converting a flex room to a bedroom with a closet. I would not plan on doing any structural work to my house after closing. I mean, honestly, the whole point of getting new construction is to avoid dealing with major renovation. So I would definitely let the builder handle that. Number two, the kitchen. Everybody knows that the kitchen is what sells the house and it's also your biggest return on investment. So on top of that, it's the heart of the home. And in my opinion, this is where most of your money should probably go. Cabinets, for instance, make sure that you're getting the style of cabinets that you want and that at a minimum, they are 42 inches tall. But if possible, if you can afford it, it's best to take the cabinets all the way to the ceiling. Not only will this give you more storage, but it will elevate the entire look of your kitchen and you will achieve a more custom feel. Countertops. If the builder offers upgraded countertops that fit within your design vision, I would definitely consider putting money towards that. Replacing countertops later is not only going to be a major pain in the butt, it's also going to be very, very expensive. Along with that, you're going to want to go ahead and pay for the sink that you want. A lot of times the countertops are cut to fit the sink. So replacing that sink and having to retrofit the counter 
countertop is not something you're gonna wanna mess with after you've moved into the house. You do not wanna take a chance with damaging your very expensive countertops because you decide later on that you want a farmhousing. Now, if the builder does not even offer the type of countertops that you have your heart set on, or if the cost is just crazy astronomical, you may wanna sit down with him or her and have a talk and say, is there a way that we can repurpose this stone from the kitchen, the standard stone to the bathrooms and maybe put some sort of temporary cheap countertop down in the kitchen so that it's easy for you to change change it out once the house closes. They may be open to that. Appliances. A lot of builders will have what they call a gourmet appliance upgrade. And that is something that I would also consider putting money towards. These gourmet appliances typically are built into the cabinetry like the microwave or the double oven or the range. So this also is not something that you want to change out after moving in because you'll have to retrofit your cabinetry, which will be expensive. Now, if you're not doing a panel ready refrigerator, then I definitely would not get the refrigerator through the builder because because you are gonna be able to get a way better price buying that on your own. Cabinet hardware. As far as cabinet hardware goes, it's definitely going to be cheaper for you to buy it on your own somewhere else as opposed to going through the builder. It's also fairly easy to replace yourself. The easiest thing in this situation would be to supply the builder with your cabinetry hardware and have them install it for you. However, if they refuse to do that, you're gonna wanna make sure that the holes that they put in the cabinetry when they install the standard poles line up with what you intend to buy after the fact. If it doesn't, then I would just delete the standard hardware altogether and then make the appropriate holes when you go to install your new hardware after you close. The takeaway here is just make sure that you're doing everything you can to ensure that you're not stuck with a bunch of holes in your cabinetry that don't line up with your new hardware. Also, one of my favorite places for buying cabinetry is Rejuvenation Online. Some of the most beautiful hardware styles that I have seen, so definitely check them out. Number three, outdoor kitchens. It has been my experience that outdoor kitchens are incredibly overpriced when you purchase them from the builder. This is something that I would consider doing after closing. However, I would pay for both a water line and a gas line to be run to the location where you plan on putting the outdoor kitchen. This is very important and it is worth the money. Number four, the paint. As long as your builder at least offers a nice white color, I would definitely not upgrade the paint. But let's say your builder doesn't and they only offer one color and it, let's say for instance it's beige and you know that you do not want beige paint throughout your entire house, then yes, in this case, I would pay to have it changed because you don't wanna move into your house and then have to repaint the entire thing. That would be a complete nightmare. But if they at least have a nice shade of white as an option, I would just go ahead and take that. Also, if there are any accent walls that you know you're gonna wanna paint, I would definitely wait and do that on my own after closing to save money. Number five, doors. Now hopefully the house comes with appropriately sized doors, but if it doesn't, you're gonna wanna upgrade your doors. There is nothing worse than having 80 inch doors with 10 foot ceilings. It looks terrible, it just does. And it's going to be too difficult for you to change that after the fact. Ripping out the door framing, cutting into the drywall and reframing each doorway is going to be a major project and I would try to avoid that at all costs. So if you need to have the doors upgraded to get the appropriate size, then I think that is a very good use of money. Now, as far as doorknobs go, doorknobs are easy to switch out after you move in. But before you make that decision, just double check that the cost of actually replacing them yourself is actually gonna save you money as opposed to going through the builder because it is kind of a pain in the butt. And another thing to watch out for are the hinges. Uh, let's say you're changing the color of the hinges. Let's say that your builder is including all brushed nickel and you wanna change to black hardware. Well, then all of your hinges are going to be silver. And so if that bothers you to have mismatch 
going on there where your hinges are silver and your knobs are black well then I would just go ahead and upgrade my hardware through the builder because having to take all the doors off of the wall remove them and then replace all of the hinges and reinstall them I feel like that is too much of a burden and too much work and hassle for the money savings number six is trim in my opinion paying for a taller baseboard is a good use of money because it gives you this nice high-end look however I would not spend any money on crown molding which is that molding that goes along the ceiling it used to be that the more crown molding you put in a house the better but now the design trend is to eliminate the crown molding altogether and just go for a more clean and modern look this is a great opportunity for you to save money and honestly I think it looks great Number seven, the carpet. I personally would not put any of my upgrade budget towards upgrading the carpet. Hopefully the builder has a neutral carpet that will go with your design concept. Instead of upgrading the carpet, consider paying the minimal cost of upgrading the carpet pad, which will give the builder grade carpet a little bit more of a luxurious feel. Number eight, hardwoods. If your builder doesn't include any hardwoods at all and you have your heart set on it, it's going to be more cost effective for you to purchase and install those hardwoods after moving in now if the builder offers some hardwoods for instance like in the kitchen but then for some reason doesn't offer it in the adjoining breakfast room or keeping room for instance then that's something you're really going to want to consider because if you go through the builder the color grading and the materials will look seamless whereas if you do that after the fact sometimes even if you use the same wood type and stain you may notice a variation between the wood that was installed by the builder and then what you installed after moving in and that could be enough to drive you crazy so that may be something that you want to put some funds towards in the design center design centers are notorious for having ridiculously crazy prices on their light fixtures I personally would very seldomly pay for an upgraded light fixture at the design center unless that light was being installed in a two-story space. So let's say, for example, you have your heart set on this huge chandelier that's going in your family room, which has 20-foot ceilings. I would definitely get that one light fixture through the building because you want to make sure that it's installed correctly, that it's braced correctly. It took four men to install the light fixture in my living room, so the labor wasn't cheap, and I wouldn't want to have to deal with that after the fact. The other situation is that there are just so many places that you can find online to buy light fixtures and it's also very easy to have them switched out either by hiring an electrician and some people even do it themselves some of my favorite places to buy light fixtures are CB2 and restoration hardware online and then also Wayfair now with that being said I would pay the money to have the builder wire for every light fixture that I intend to install. Pay close attention to what lighting is standard in the house. I've found that some secondary bedrooms don't even come with an overhead light. So remember that you do not have to buy the light fixture or even speakers, for instance, from the builder in order to have them pre-wire the house for those things. And that typically is going to be a lot cheaper to have them do it than to have or pay for an electrician to come in later, bust through the walls, and then add the wiring afterwards. Number 10, tile and grout. If you cannot live with any of the standard tile selections, I would recommend upgrading your tile at the design center. It will cost way more money to have the builder grade tile demolished and replaced after you move in, not to mention the mess and the disruption to your life. The only exception would be for backsplashes. If the builder is too expensive or doesn't offer what you want, I would just have them delete the backsplash because this is something that can be easily added after you move in and the sky's the limit on the different options that you're going to be able to find for your backsplash number 11 the primary bathroom now the primary bathroom is another great place to invest in upgrades there is an excellent return on investment when it comes to this room I suggest going all out and getting the frameless shower enclosure and door a freestanding tub and quartz countertops now the sink plumbing fixtures are easy enough to be 
swapped out after you move in. However, be aware that if you plan to swap out your shower fixtures, you'll need to make sure that you are choosing a fixture that is compatible with the roughen valve that was installed in the wall during construction. So swapping out the shower fixture will require a little bit more due diligence up front in order to avoid having to mess up the tile to access the valve later on. Number 12, bathroom mirrors. If you're interested in doing framed mirrors throughout your house, I would not upgrade these through the builders. Instead, I would ask the builder to delete all of the mirrors that come standard with the house so that you can just replace them once you move in and avoid getting all that messy glue all over the wall and then having to, you know, patch up the drywall. Number 13, pools. Personally, I would not purchase my pool through the builder. Chances are the builder is just going to hire a pool contractor to install the pool and then mark it up substantially for their inconvenience before passing on that cost to you. So you'll likely pay way more by ordering your pool through the builder. The absolute only way I think it would be worth it would be if you know for a fact that once the house is up, you won't be able to get large equipment around back to dig out the pool. If your only chance of getting the pool is during construction and it's something you really, really want, then by all means, go for it. But otherwise, you'll save a lot of money by contracting it out yourself after you move in. Number 14, finally, you have landscaping window treatments, and custom closets, all of which can be easily installed after moving in and for a much better price than you would pay if you go through your builder. For my own house, I was operating on a budget, so I also wanted a nice closet system for my room. So what we did was we purchased IKEA closet, we built them out, and then we hired a trim guy to trim them in and it really gave my closet a nice built-in look for a fraction of the price. Well, that's the end of my recommendations for how to use your upgrade money wisely. If I've left something out or if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I'm leave it in the comments and I will make sure to get back to you. Also, as a local real estate agent here in Atlanta, Georgia, I absolutely love helping my clients through the new construction process. I'm there with you from the contract to the design center to all the construction walkthroughs and all the way through closing, helping you every step of the way. And I love it. So if I can be a resource for you, please feel free to reach out to me. My information is linked in the description. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you for watching. Bye now.